What is a protrusion machine? Is it for you? Free filament maker machine. This video assumes you already own some consumer 3D printer and have successfully printed at least a couple of models with different filaments. You also know all the basics about 3D printing. I will only cover this topic in relation to 3D printing. Forgive me my pain skills. Let's start with explanation what is pultrusion. Pultrusion is a mechanism to push or pull material through a smaller hole that is usually heated to make material soft. Using this process we can wrap stripes of plastic to make shape of a cylinder of a specific diameter. In our case it will be 1.75 mm to match our extruder. The basics of pultrusion is some sort of gear mechanism a hole with a heater and this is it. Pultrusion machine can be built in numerous ways and doesn't have any irreplaceable parts. For example, I have seen at least five different gearbox mechanisms to do the actual pulling. There are several open source projects that you can find yourself such as PetPull2 or Recreator 3D and many others. Technically all of them work on the same basis which is basically pulling filament from one side <clears throat> using the extruder with the drilled hole inside of it to 1.75 diameter. However, there are a couple of projects that use a different approach. When it comes to a part availability we will cover this topic later. First of all, this series of video is to help you with the following questions. Is the pultrusion machine for you? What are the costs? What are the benefits? And what are the potential hazards and issues? Does your printer can even print with a PAT filament? What kind of uh, heater and cooler elements can be used? Bottle cutter? which is very important topic by the way, electronics, assembly, tuning and testing. There are quite a couple of videos of built machines promising you cheap machine and excellent print quality, but that is mostly fairy tales. Let's start from the beginning. Is the pultrusion machine even for you? First of all, even the most advanced automated machine will not produce good results without preparing PET bottles and quite a couple of trial and error runs. This takes time and what often people forget is time equals money. I would argue that time is even more valuable as you have limited amount of it. So to summarize, if you can take an extra hours at your job and you will get paid at least 10 USD per hour, economically pultrusion machine is not profitable. Second, pultrusion machine requires patient and electromechanical skills to operate. It can be very dangerous. If you never work with electronics, trust me, forget about pultrusion. Third, you will have to take into consideration that pultruded filament is not going to be the same quality as the one from the store. If you expect this filament to print small or detailed prints, forget about pultrusion machine. However, if you tick all the boxes above and you are just like me who just like tinkering, feel free to build your own. Potential hazards and issues. Pultrusion machine can be very dangerous. Because of pretty strong gearbox, it is really easy to break bones and snap fingers. Another possible hazard is exposed electronics and high temperatures. If you have not worked with electronics, I would advise against building your own, simply because making short circuit can potentially ignite a fire. If you do not have basic electronic tools such as multimeter, soldering iron, tin, tweezers, etc., do not try to build one. Pultrusion machines are often built on a wooden basis and there is technically nothing wrong with that, except heater element that is mounted to it using a metal corner that is thermally conductive. 
I advise using some kind of thermal insulation, at least a Kapton tape. Aside from that, it draws a considerable amount of power, so you'll have to make sure you have a sufficient power supply for it, such as ATX power supply or 24 volt printer power supply. This also includes any step up or down converters you intend to use. Is your printer even suited to print with PET filament? Before you can even consider building your own PET machine, check if your printer is even able to print with it. And it's not just the issue with the hot end temperature. PET plastic requires quite high printing temperatures around 260 to 300 degrees Celsius. Most common PTFE lined heat breaks are not suitable for this. Not only it may cause clogging, but it's also dangerous for your health or your pets. In addition to this, PET filament due to its shape is not easy to push through the extruder. A lot of stock extruders that have idle rollers such as this one is basically a bearing with a cavity. Trust me, it's not suitable to push PET filament with it. I even have tried replacing it with flat bearing and it still did not work. Despite having very uniform filament, I was not able to print with it, so I have decided to replace my head with a dual geared one. I have chosen BQH2V2. We will see how it goes in about a week. Different gearbox mechanisms and motors. Assuming your printer is capable to print PET filament and you have decided to build your own machine, Let's start with choosing the heart of it, which will be a gearbox and a motor. There are two common mechanisms depending on the motor of a choice. Either it's a stepper motor such as NEMA 17, or a typical DC motor often used as a car wiper motor. Depending on which you will choose, all the other options will change. Both have disadvantages and advantages. DC motors are technically simple to use as they do not require microcontroller, but this is also a downside as they are not simple to control, for example, speed. In my case, they were also astonishingly expensive and cost about five times as much as stepper motors. They could also be salvaged from junkyard, but it's easier to sell than done. And I personally do not like to sell junkyards. In the end I have decided to use stepper motor and build gearbox from a pet pool 2 project. But I have seen numerous projects and will cover the ones I have seen. Let's start with Recreator 3D. It's a pretty good one, compact, but in my opinion its biggest flaw is the lack of a bearing on the shaft of the spool. I just cannot trust plastic to handle friction for prolonged periods of time. Parts were created for aluminium profiles, which just isn't suitable to mount on a wooden plate. Another one I have found is a paid version of a compact gearbox similar to Pet Pool 1 project. There is really no point in printing this one, as it's just not sturdy enough as seen in this video. It became wobbly after some time despite having bearings and being reinforced with steel rods. The pool struder is another copy of Pet Pool 2 with just a lot of added plastic. It should be okay to print, just make sure to follow its guide completely. There is also a petamentor which uses DC motor, but it does not have any gearbox and a spool is glued to the motor shaft. Also does not have any counter on the other side, so entire pulling force is on the motor shaft. While it may work, I'm pretty sure it will not hold for too long. And lastly, Pet Pool Gearbox, which was the original and the most sturdy in addition to the safety feature that allows you to disconnect stepper motor from a gearbox using lever. This is the one I have decided to print and this is the one I am currently using. It should have enough force to not only pull the filament through a nozzle, but also cut the plastic bottle at the same time. In the next video I will cover the rest of the topics such as heater and cooler elements as well as transistors to drive it. 
electronics to drive your machine, bottle cutter and preparation of bottles, assembly, tuning and testing. Despite printing gearbox from Petpool 2 project, I have opted out to make my own firmware and share it with community. It will be open sourced as opposed to Petpool and you can create your own machine with it, but you are not allowed to make commercial product with it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.